you want me to keep throwing some out as I come along? Yeah, that'll be fine. You can out there wherever you want. All right, I'm ways back from you, so I, I don't think I have to worry about crossing over. Okay, yeah. The North Carolina Department of Agriculture is sweeping through the state's coastal plains, conducting its own version of Sherman's March. What we're trying to do is burn the place that we call Back Bay. This is about 400 acres in size. We have fire. But unlike General Sherman's March to the Sea, this Savannah campaign is not intended to destroy everything in its path. Ag officials are conducting a prescribed burn, which they say will reduce hazardous fuel and restore the environment to its natural habitat. Fuel is the accumulation of the vegetation, the pine needles, the brush, the ground cover that builds up and builds up through time when things haven't been burned. Rob Evans, who oversees North Carolina's plant conservation program, says controlled fires keep the forest healthy. When it hasn't been burned for a long time, the forest gets denser, thicker, more closed in, less sunlight, and the fuels that we talked about build up over top of the plants, just like mulch in a garden. Today's fire, conducted within the Boiling Spring Lakes Plant Conservation Preserve, has a dual purpose, cut back hazardous fuel and create a more hospitable environment for what Charles Darwin called the world's most wonderful plants. This site is one of the most important sites for the flytrap in North Carolina, and North Carolina is the stronghold for the species. Naturally, it grew only in North Carolina and just over the state line into South Carolina. And down there at this point, there are very few left, and so conservation in the wild for the species depends on North Carolina. The Venus flytrap, that carnivorous, insect-eating plant that captured your imagination as a child, can only be found in the wild within a 100-mile radius around Wilmington, North Carolina. We believe that these habitats burned very frequently back historically. Lightning fires would have started very frequently, maybe annually. When the area was burned that frequently, there wasn't a lot of fuel buildup, there weren't a lot of shrubs, there weren't dense groves of trees, and there were lots of fly traps and other rare plants in the understory of those forests. But after decades and decades of fire suppression and fragmentation, we really don't have those large landscapes that are frequently burned anymore. So slowly but surely trying to reclaim and restore those is what we're trying to do here on the preserve. Conservation efforts are also taking place in Chapel Hill at the North Carolina Botanical Gardens. We have one of the best and most inclusive collections in the southeast because of the spectacular diversity of these plants. And we grow them in raised beds because the Piedmont soil is so clayey, and these plants really require a well-drained, acid, sandy soil. Director Peter White explains what makes the flytrap so special. The Venus flytrap is in the genus Dionea, and it's really a very unique genus. There's nothing like it anywhere else in the world. It has these wonderful bear trap-like claws. The leaves are adapted to swing shut and trap the insect prey. In many ways, flytraps are similar to other plants in that they create their own food through photosynthesis. But over time, the low nutrient content found in the surrounding sandy soil forced the plant to abandon its purely vegetarian diet. So these carnivorous plants, instead of extending their root systems to capture nitrogen and phosphorus from the soil, they've, in a sense, learned to get the insects to deliver those nutrients to them, to their doorstep, uh, by attracting the insects in and trapping them. Cameraman Keith Blatz and I patiently waited inside the greenhouse for an unsuspecting insect to venture inside the flytrap's death door. The flytrap's nectar-secreting glands failed to attract any prey. But with permission from the botanical garden staff, we poached a mosquito from a nearby spider web and dropped it into the flytrap's mouth. The insect touched two tiny sensitive hairs located inside the leaves, which caused the hinged leaves to clasp together, trapping its meal. Over the next several hours, the trap will eventually seal itself and secrete enzymes to help digest the prey. It is just such an amazing thing because people tend to think of plants as being passive. They just sit there. They don't do anything. And fly traps do something. And they have such an appeal. When you look in a fly trap, I mean, it does look otherworldly. You know, it doesn't look like something of this earth. The plant's unique palette has endeared it to Debbie Crane and the Nature Conservancy, as well as those looking to make a profit off its commercial appeal. In North Carolina, it is legal to sell Venus flytraps as long as the plants are propagated or grown responsibly. 
Selling traps that were stolen from their natural environment is strictly prohibited. The biggest threat is really man-made through development. The second biggest threat is probably the fire suppression that has occurred over time. But then poachers are a very large threat as well. We've been realizing just recently that poachers were coming into some of our better places where the flytrap was thriving and basically stole all the plants. They are poaching thousands at a time. They take the green part off immediately, so all they're taking out is the little root bulb. And putting those in a burlap sack, you can get about a thousand in a burlap sack and still have room left over. So they're, they are poaching large quantities of them. The rural landscape in southeastern North Carolina makes it difficult for law enforcement to catch poachers in the act. And the relatively light fine, usually under $50, does little to deter illegal activity. We realized at that point protecting the land and managing the land appropriately wasn't enough. That the core preserves that we were counting on to be the places where the flytrap could be conserved are essentially at risk because poachers are entering essentially every one of those protected sites and stealing all the plants they can get a hold of. But they're not making much at all. They're probably selling them for, you know, a dime a piece to somebody who then turns around and may actually make a pretty decent profit off of it. Crane believes that educating the public about the Venus flytrap will encourage developers and poachers to think twice about harming one of the state's most prized plants. It's arguably our most famous resident. Uh, I mean, it's an amazing plant. It's only found in the wild in this tiny little corner of the universe. It really is our, our natural heritage. I mean, if they're gone in the wild, it's a big claim to fame that North Carolina loses.